All right, I had another video where I demonstrated how to build out this, or at least use this flow to take a file attached through a file upload question on a form in Microsoft Forms and save it to a SharePoint site. And someone asked a question of, well, what if I wanted to send that file as an email attachment? It's pretty similar. Um, in fact, the, the first four steps, the, the trigger, and then the first three actions in the flow are going to be exactly the same, but where we're going to change things up is in this apply to each. So we're still going to, in fact, I just made a copy of the flow. I did, you know, save as under the, the flow and called this personal form file upload to email attachment. So we're still triggering when a form response is submitted. We're getting the response details, getting the user profile from the Office 365 user services, users service, uh, to get the proper email address, because sometimes the email address of the submitter comes through as a weird string. Not sure why, but I always just throw this get user profile step in here to um, make sure I'm getting good data. And then we need this parse JSON step, and I'll include the 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 content that I have pasted in here for the schema uh, in the description to this video so you'll have that to work from but basically what we're taking is the response from the question the file upload question and using the schema to parse that JSON out to get things like the uh, the drive ID and the reference ID etc so that we can then identify that file so, so far, so good. It's pretty much the same as what we've done before. Inside this apply to each, we're then taking the output of that parse JSON and understanding that because the file upload question can have up to 10 uh, attachments, the content there will always be treated as an array. So even if you only limit it to one file attachment, it's still going to be treated like an array. So you you are kind of forced into using this apply to each process or, or uh, loop to iterate over these steps for each item that's attached. Even if it's only one item, it's still handled as an, as an array. So we're still doing the same two step, first two steps here where we're getting the file metadata using the um, OneDrive for Business connector and getting the file content using the OneDrive for Business connector. So we're, we're, we're getting that information based on the, if I expand these, we're using the drive ID dot ID of the item uh, or from that parse JSON to get the file metadata of the attachment and the file content is going to be derived from the ID that's re returned from this get file metadata. So the output of this is going to give us the name for the file, and the output of this gives us clearly the file content. Uh, now, what we were doing before was uh, basically create using this with the create file action in SharePoint to create a file uh, using that name and the file content. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get rid of, and we were sharing that file. So I'm going to get rid of those two actions because we don't need those. If we're sending an email, we don't need those SharePoint actions. Uh, what we do need to do though, to send the email, uh, again, because we could have more than one file attachment, we need to create a variable, an array variable, and then append the file data, file information to that variable. Okay, so in order to, as I said, in order to attach this, we're going to need to create an array variable and append the file information to it. So let's create that variable. Now we need to do it. We can't create a variable or initialize a variable inside of a loop. It has to be at the, the root or base level of, the, uh, of our flow. So I'm going to click Add an Action here and initialize a variable and we'll call this var attachments and make that an array type variable and then just to keep things clean 
going to append var attachments to the name of that action so we know what that action is doing. So we're initializing the variable var attachments. Now inside the apply to each, we need to, as I said, append the file name and the file content to that array variable. So I'm going to add an action and search for append to array variable. It's important to use array variable, not string variable, because we created an array variable. Um, and again, I'll rename this just to keep things clean. And within the value here, the format we need to use is going to be curly brace. And you don't ne technically need the line breaks and everything here. I just do it to make things look neat. And name in double quotes colon. And then the file name, which will be from the get file metadata name, name of the file or folder. That's what we want. Then we need a comma. And then we need content bytes, capital B, capital C, and a capital B with no space in between, surrounded by double quotes, colon, and then the file content. And then we need a curly brace to close it out. So this is object no, you know, JavaScript object notation or JSON. So we have, you know, every object is defined as, you know, in the format with curly braces, double quotes around the property name, and the values, etc. All right. So now we're appending that data to our variable, and just to be sure that we have everything working so far. Let's just save this here and run a test. And this is the file upload demo form that we're using. So I'm just going to say test one and upload a file here. And I'll just grab some random Word document and click Submit so that we can make sure that our flow, you can see it's running, it succeeded, and if we open this up, again, it's it's always a good idea to, to run, you, you know, as you're building your flow out, run it in pieces to be sure that you're getting the information that you need before you go and build the entire thing and have some little piece somewhere get in the way of it working. So I now see that I'm getting the attachments in a format that I expect. So I'm getting the name um, with the, the file name and then content bytes includes it's an object within an object uh, because we have the content type and then we have the content itself. So that's the file in binary format. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to edit this and now we need to add the action to send an email with that attachment or with that array attached. Um, now you could technically put that email action inside the apply to each if you are if you are limiting the file attachment to or the, the question to only one file attached then this apply to each will only ever run once. Um, so you, putting the send email action inside here would be fine. However, if you are allowing multiple attachments or if you are, you know, if you have multiple questions, multiple separate file attachment and file upload questions, and you want to append all of them to that attachments array, um, basically you would need to have that email action outside of the loop. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll click new step. Now, when you look at the send email actions, there are several of them. Um, one of my favorites is the mail connectors send an email notification because it sends from a service account rather than being sent from my personal Outlook mailbox. Uh, so let's take a look at that one. And I have a two field subject to body, that's great. But if I show the advanced options, um, 
I can see that this only allows one attachment, which again, technically in this scenario would work because I could drop in the, you know, the file name and the attachment, uh, or the attachment name and the attachment, uh, I'm sorry, this would be the content, this would be the name for the file. Um, I could do that in this scenario, but because I wanted to show how this would be, how this would work with multiple files, we're not going to use this action. So I'm just delete that. Um, and we're actually going to use the Outlook send an email v2 action from the Office 365 Outlook connector. And for the two, we can get the mail, which is the email address from the user profile. Subject, let's say, here is your file. And then in the body, we'll say, thanks for attaching this file. Again, body, you know, this information could be whatever you want. And then when I show the advanced settings now, you'll notice the attachments control here, or the fields here, are different uh, because it allows multiple attachments to be added. So that the mail connectors send email action, you're, you're limited to one attachment. Here you can have as many attachments as Outlook will allow. Um, but rather than plugging in the attachment name and attachment content over and over, what you'll want to do is switch to array notation by clicking the button up here and then attaching that array variable. So var attachments and the importance I've noticed if you don't specifically set this to whatever you want, low, normal, or high, it will always default to low. So if it's an important email, you can set it to high. I just always set that to normal and hit save and let's try running that again so I'm just to, to trigger it again I'm going to say blah 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 attach a file and say I've got this leasing agreement attach that and submit it And if we look, our flow succeeded. Let's just take a look at the run, run history. So we'll, we already know what all the rest of that does. So let's just take a look at the send email. Thanks for attaching your file, show more. There's the data. And if I jump over to my email, there is my email with the attachment saying, here's your file, thanks for attaching this file. And if I click on that, there is the file itself. So that is basically what you need to do if you want to, rather than saving the file to SharePoint, you could send it as an email attachment. Um, obviously in certain circumstances that's going to be exactly what you want, but in other circumstances if there are a lot of files or if they're too large to send through email, you might still be better off saving them to SharePoint and including a link to them uh, or sharing them with the user, including a link in that email. So use whatever makes sense for your scenario, but that's how you would go about attaching it to an email if that's what you want to do.